Hi, OJ here. Did you know you could buy a great looking used car like this from Hertz? That's right. Hertz selects and sells only the finer cars from its rental fleet. And everyone comes with a record of service and maintenance and a limited warranty covering the engine, transmission, drive shaft, and differential. Now, how's that for a warranty? Ask for full details on the warranty when you check the great looking cars and the values at any of these Hertz car sales locations. by the tree behind the chemistry lab. Shall I bring a knife so we can carve our initials in a pair of hearts? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll see you there in five minutes. in a dress shop, killing time between classes. Your wife came in. Oh. Well, naturally, I said hello. Lita's always been pleasant to me. Then this morning, she cut me dead. Maybe she didn't see you. <laughs> Only because she was looking right through me. Oh, Ross, it was so horrible. But you know Lita always has a flair for the dramatic. Macbeth turns her on. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll talk to her. All right, all right. That's enough. <laughs> Don't do that, Barry. I'm just liable to take you on. Now you just shut up. I didn't believe it. Any girl on campus, but not her. You stop it. In fact, I ought to bust you Don't in half. Don't do that. Let go of him. I, I have an aversion about being punched up by my students. Let me tell you something. You try to see her again, and I'll not only just punch you out, I will kill you. You are so stupid. You're really incredible. What do you think we were doing? Making love? 
It wouldn't have been the first time, would it? Just stay away from me. You know his wife's not going to let him go. You're going to wind up with nobody. skip bail and make a run for it. Oh, I think you're more intelligent than that. My intelligence has never been tested this way. I mean, I'm charged with murder. And all I know is that somebody killed Professor Coleman and it wasn't me. Well, according to the police, Coleman was walking alone when it happened. The murder weapon was a heavy tree limb. Why did they want my jacket? What jacket? My basketball jacket. They took it out of my locker. Were you wearing it today? Yes, sir. I'll check it out. This will be in the papers, won't it? Yes. Out of town? Well, Professor Coleman was nationally known through his books. Worried about your folks? No, they're both dead. I was thinking of my aunt and uncle. This is crazy, you know that? I mean, what am I doing here? All right, why'd they pick you up? I have this girl. Or I had a girl. My name is Joni Ellis. There was a rumor on campus that Somebody had seen her going into a motel with Professor Coleman. I didn't believe it. I mean, not Joni. We were going to be married. I mean, why? It just didn't make sense. Then today, when I found them together, I, I guess I lost my head. I mean, the way he was holding her, I would have knocked his head off if she hadn't stopped me. But she did stop you. And that was all there was to it. Coleman walked away, and I never saw him again. Barry, did you threaten his life? I guess I did. But it was the kind of threat you make that when you're so mad, you don't know what you're saying. I didn't follow it up, I swear it. What'd you do? I went back to my room. And then what? Went to sleep. You found Professor Coleman holding your girl. You threatened his life. And then you went back to your room and went to sleep? First, I took this medicine. I have to take it for a bronchial thing I've got. 
This stuff knocks me out. I mean, if I didn't grab a nap, I wouldn't be able to function at all. Well, let alone play basketball. Barry, do you room alone or do you have a roommate? No, I room with Ken Foster. He's on the team with me. But he was out. I was alone in my room asleep. Well, that's all there is. I committed murder, I think, of a better story than that. We believe you, Barry. Oh, good. You had me worried. Oh, there's still plenty to worry about. The DA has a witness who heard you threaten Coleman. What witness? There was nobody there except... Joni. Is it Joni? This is a restricted area. I have to speak with Mr. Marshall. I'm Joni Ellis. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are, miss. It's all right, officer. I'm Owen Marshall. Let's talk up here. They told me you were defending Barry. They were right. Do you think he has a chance? Well, don't you? Please, Mr. Marshall, I have to know. Why? I mean, you were the one who set the police on him. Is that what Barry thinks, too? I didn't go to the police. They came to me. There were questions. I had to tell them the truth. I didn't think they'd arrest Barry. Oh, dear God, what have I done? I'm sorry. This is where it happened? I'm sorry, I can't let you through. But I have to see for myself. I have to... to know where he died. We, we used to walk here. Sometimes Ross would, would just come by himself to solve a problem. Mrs. Coleman? My husband would walk here for hours and hours. It was his favorite place. I never would have dreamt. What are you doing here? Mrs. Coleman. How can you show your face? Don't, please. You're a tramp. You're nothing but a tramp. If you hadn't thrown yourself at him, he would still be alive. Mrs. Coleman, please don't say anything you'll regret. Oh, don't talk to me about regret. I have to live with it. But her, look at her. Do you see her guilt? You should because she's responsible. Go on, tell them. Mrs. Tell them that you cheated on your lover with my husband. You're to blame you. <laughs> ugly back there, but I couldn't help it. I had to say it. I know that girl slightly. I've seen her at student faculty functions in my own home. You know, there are always rumors about the, uh, the extra marital activities of some of the younger faculty members. And when I walked into that store and saw her there, well, something in her eyes gave her away. I don't expect you to understand, but in that instant, that every story I had heard about them was true. Then her boyfriend murdering Ross because of her. Are you so sure Barry Meadows murdered your husband? Is there any doubt? Well, there might be somebody else who had reason to. No. No, everybody loved Ross, and Ross loved everybody. He had no enemies? No. Well, I don't think... <sighs> you don't think what? 
Well, I don't... I don't think he considered Mark an enemy. Mark? Uh, Mark... Mark Wade was, uh... was assisting him on a special project for the, uh... World Economic Foundation. He was the, um... Associate Project Director. And they didn't get along? Why, I don't know. It's just that Ross said that Mark Wade has to be taken off the project. I don't know why. Well, it might be worth looking into. Mr. Brandon, I assure you, it has nothing to do with my husband's death. No matter how much looking into it, it's not going to alter the truth. And what is the truth, Mrs. Coleman? That Barry Meadows killed my husband. You're sure Joni didn't volunteer to be a witness against me? They came to her. Naturally, she couldn't hold anything back. She's concerned about Barry. Well, that makes two of us. I, um, got a report from the DA's office. Some threads were found clinging to the murder weapon. The police lab has matched them with a torn spot in your basketball jacket. And somebody planted it. Rubbed it against that branch purposely. I don't know, Mr. Marshall. I just don't understand any of this. Have you gotten in touch with your aunt and uncle? There's nothing they can do. I'm just hoping they don't hear about this and get all upset. Uncle Jack's been sick and Aunt Peg's got all she can handle taking care of him. They don't need this. You're close to them, aren't you? They raised me. I can hardly remember my mom and dad. They died when I was around four years old. Some drunk ran into them on the highway. So they sent me to live with these two old folks. Old? Jack's my great uncle. Well, they're both nearly 80 years old. Worked hard all their lives. Proud. Just as proud as they could be when I got my athletic scholarship. Because neither one of them got past the sixth grade. But my Uncle Jack, there's nobody wiser than him. Seventy odd years of studying the land. A farmer. And he wasn't until he had to give it up. Boy, he could grow the best snap beans you ever saw. I was going to make their last days more comfortable. You know, take care of them the way they took care of me. Here I am. Well, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Well, I'll be here. Hi, right, Jess. Want to me? Well, I don't know. Maybe. The associate director of Coleman's research project wanted out. Coleman cut off his invitations to the house. Now the guy's in charge of Coleman's classes. And there's a good chance he'll take over the entire research project. Who is he? His name's Mark Wade. Yes? Mr. Wade? Yes, what is it? I'm sorry to disturb you. I'm Owen Marshall. Oh, I should have recognized you. I've attended some of your lectures. Oh, are you interested in criminal law? Well, I'm interested in many things. Was this Professor Coleman's classroom? Yes, poor Ross. Uh, his ghost walks anywhere on the campus. It surely walks here. I'm uh, working on my lecture here. Uh, I decided to revise the course to conform with my own ideas. Uh, don't get me wrong. I uh, admired Ross in many areas. I respected his ability to reach his students. But I did not buy all of his economic theories. Is that why you submitted your resignation as associate director of the research project? Who told you that? Uh, I've been talking to Lita Coleman. Well, I guess Ross didn't keep many secrets from her. You know, for someone engaged in research, you don't seem a very curious person. You still haven't asked me what I'm doing here. I assume it has something to do with Ross's death. Well, actually, I wanted to ask about a yellow folder. Joni Ellis saw him take one from his desk. A yellow folder, you say? Yes, bright yellow. Well, there they are. Those are Ross's class files. They contain reports, exams, etc. Probably taking some classwork home with them. So it appears. But it's puzzling, nevertheless. Puzzling in what way? That a teacher takes classwork home with him in a yellow folder? No, no. The thing is, that particular yellow folder wasn't found on him after he was killed. Now listen, you guys, we still got a schedule to play. Now I know Barry Meadows getting busted was a kick in the head for all of you. But is that any reason to forget how to handle a ball? 
All right, we're going to work on some 3-2 zone, and I want to see some hustle. Coach, call the team still in shock? Yeah, but that's not why I want to talk to you. You know, one of my boys told me something that may be of great help to Barry. I didn't know if I should take it to the cops or not. Shoot. Hey, Kenny. Come over here. Kenny was Meadow's roommate. Well, yeah, I know, but you were out when Barry was in. Only I wasn't, not the whole time. I came back to the room and I saw Barry asleep on his bed. What time is it? Uh, quarter to two until after three. Now, Professor Coleman was murdered at 2.30 on the other side of the campus. You couldn't have been mistaken about the time. No, sir, I had to cram for an oral exam at 3.15. And Barry was asleep the whole time, you sure of that? Uh, yeah, yeah, he snores a lot because of his bronchial thing. He was out of it. Did you try to wake him? No, no, I just made sure that his alarm was set so he wouldn't miss basketball practice. And he had no idea that you were in the room during that period? Oh, he came and went like a bandit while Barry was asleep. We got ourselves a witness. Ken, why did you wait so long to tell us? Why didn't you inform the police when Barry was arrested? Uh, well, I didn't know when the murder took place until I read the exact time in the afternoon paper. Barry didn't know he had an alibi, and Ken didn't know he could provide one. Shouldn't somebody tell Barry now and let him know that he's off the hook? I'll tell him as soon as he's out on bail. Uh, not so fast. The alibi may not be that good. For one thing, it's unsupported. Uh, I don't get it. Well, you're not only his roommate, you're his teammate. And the team's in trouble without Barry. Now, what's that got to do with it? I saw him asleep at the time of the murder. If you'd said that earlier, the authorities might have been willing to accept it. Everybody's going to say that I'm lying to save my buddy, right? No, not everybody. A jury might be convinced you're telling the truth. Why don't we save it for them? Well, as long as I don't have to come back in after the trial. I'd say we have an ace in the hole. And cheer up. Being out on bail is better than not being out at all. I, um, left my pen inside. Excuse me for a moment, Barry. so much they can't stop drinking it and for them there's rc with rc you get a great cola taste that's easy on the syrup easy on the gas right oj rc for people like oj simpson who can't stop drinking cola like to win twenty-five thousand dollars? get entries for rc's football sweepstakes for women only at participating stores Tell me about Professor Coleman. 
I never went out with him, but it wasn't from the lack of trying. Hey, hey you got a dime. Sure. He told me in words I could understand that he didn't play around, so I quit the course. It's funny, the way I heard it, Coleman was playing around with a girl named Joni Ellis. You heard wrong. Coleman was too straight, and if I couldn't come on with him, I know she couldn't. What for? Your phone number. You might have to ask you some more questions. But you never asked. Hi, Ken. You didn't tell me you knew Kenny Foster. No, I didn't know he was a friend of yours. Sure. I uh, hope he's not going to break training again. You know, I saw him drink around ten beers in here the other day. Coleman. He was okay. I felt so bad when someone came in here and said he was dead. I wasn't the only one. You should have seen Kenny. I thought he was going to have a heart attack. Ken Foster, where was this? Here, I told you he was drinking all that beer. You don't happen to remember what time it was. I sure do. I was waiting for some dude that stood me up. Well, look, it happens. I was here from um, 2.30 till 3. Kenny came a couple minutes after I did, and uh, he was here when I left. It's impossible. You couldn't have been in your dormitory room and across the campus in the hangout at the same time. Well, well maybe, uh, maybe I got a little mixed up on the time. Oh, you got a lot mixed up. You didn't see Barry asleep. You didn't go near your room. That's why you didn't tell the police. It was a lie, wasn't it, Ken? I'm sorry, buddy. I tried. Yeah, I was at the hangout having a few beers. I, I didn't think anybody would remember. Well, you're lucky they didn't nail you in court for perjury. You could have had the cell next to Barry's. Well, what was so wrong with what I did? I, I mean, he would have done the same for me if it had been the other way around, right? Maybe. I just couldn't let this happen to you. I had to try to help. Ken, in lying to help Barry's case, you may have heard it badly. We were depending on your testimony. So what do we have without it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Come in. sleep very much last night. Does it show? Only around the eyes. I used to have a blouse that color. Well, that's my fault. I've been around the block a few times. I should have known Ken Foster's story was too good to be true. Well, at least you found it out before you sprang it on a jury. Now, what do we get now? A bunch of loose ends. For instance? Well, that yellow folder. If I only knew what was in it. There is someone who might know what's in it. Professor Coleman's body was found at 2.45. He'd been dead for 15 minutes, but not much more than that, because he was with someone alive at 2.20. Of course his appointment in the administration building. Frida, you're fantastic. I know. Now, if we could just convince Stan of that. I burned his pea soup last night. Pea soup? Yes, Mr. Marshall. He did have a yellow folder with him. I'm certain he came here with every intention of showing me what was in it. But he didn't reveal its contents? No. No, he seemed to be struggling with that decision. The usually lucid professor was, well, purposefully vague. He talked around the subject, posing a theoretical question about a person who violated a position of trust. A fellow faculty member? Well, maybe he wasn't sure he wanted to expose the man. 
Possibly. Or do you have some other theory? I'd heard gossip. Sometimes I'm in the office of the clearing house for campus rumors. Ross was a young man. He was having difficulty with his marriage. A girl with whom he was linked is attractive. I knew that much before he came here. Then you think he was talking about himself? He was in a position to trust. Now, this girl could have offered herself to him in return for special consideration. It has been known to happen. Well, if we accept that hypothesis, what was in the yellow folder? Hmm? Proof of his fall from grace. Perhaps his resignation. Now, these are my impressions. I couldn't very well go to the police with conjecture beside it added little to their case. And it contained serious allegations regarding a man who could no longer refute them. In addition to which I can't believe it. What do you believe? That there was something in that folder, something incriminating to someone else, and it led to his murder. Mr. Wade, I seem to be barging in on you again. My associate, just Brandon. Yes, can I help you? We'd like to take a look through your files. If necessary, we can get a subpoena, but I don't feel it'll be necessary. Oh, no, I don't think it'll be necessary. Uh, may I ask what you're looking for? Well, if the yellow folder contained the records of one of Ross Coleman's students, it'll be missing from the files. We'd like to know which one's missing. Well, I hope that this isn't uh, important to your case. Why do you say that, Mr. I've made drastic changes in the filing system. What sort of change? It's in new cabinets. No yellow folders. Yes, in new cabinets and uh, new files. Each folder contains only the records dating from when I took over the class. There's one folder for each student. What happened to the old files? I threw them out. At least most of them. Like most teachers, I prefer to use my own system. Coleman's was unique, to say the least. I didn't know anyone would want to look at them. They were no use to me. This was my husband's desk. You know, every time I come into this room, I expect to see him sitting there. Do you know if he kept duplicate files, Mrs. Coleman? No, he didn't. He did keep notes. What sort of notes? Crumpled. He was a writer as well as a teacher. In fact, he even made the bottom of the non-fiction bestseller list once. The Road of All Evil. I read it. Provocative and thoroughly entertaining. Oh, it sounds like a blurb from the back of the dust jacket. It was good, wasn't it? Could have written so many more books if only. If only. Well, there's no point in going into that. If only what? Well, if only he hadn't been so caught up in teaching in the academic life. I encouraged him to accept the appointment to the research project. I just thought it might lead upward and outward. I was a pushy wife. But Ross needed a push every now and then. We were talking about notes, right? Did he keep a journal? Oh, no, nothing that easy. He used to carry small white file cards around with him all day and take notes. And then at night he'd come home and empty out his pockets on the desk and sort through what he had written. Did anybody else know about this? No. No, it was an, an idiosyncrasy that he didn't want publicized. Would you like to see them? I'm afraid it's his own brand of shorthand. <laughs> Research project. Try this one. MKWD. Mark Wade. Right. JNLS. Johnny Ellis. Mrs. Coleman, will you help us decipher these? I'm going to all this trouble because you believe that Barry Meadows is innocent. You really think someone else murdered my husband, don't you? Yes. What if that, um, that missing folder contained damaging evidence uh, about my husband and the Ellis girl? 
Then maybe I killed him in a fit of jealous rage. And, and then took the folder to conceal my motive. Did you ever think of that? Yes, I thought about it. Dr. Gordon, you heard the opening remarks. It's Mr. Marshall's contention that the defendant was asleep at the time of the murder due to the after effect of a certain prescription drug. Of course, neither the drug nor the manufacturer's on trial here. We've agreed not to mention its trade name. Mr. Marshall? So stipulated. Well, Dr. Gordon, I take it that you know the name of this prescription drug. Yes, sir. In fact, I've conducted extensive research on it. Very well. Proceed, Mr. Schiller. Tell us about the side effects of this drug, Doctor. Doctor. Let me preface my remarks by saying that the benefits of the drug far outweigh its side effects. Otherwise, it would be withdrawn from the market. What are some of these side effects? Blurry of vision, some dizziness, and of course, drowsiness. And does everyone who takes this drug fall asleep immediately afterward? No. Usually, physicians advise sleep, though. Why is that, Doctor? Because of other peculiarities of the drug. What are these peculiarities? Well, patients on the drug, especially those with emotional problems, can sometimes become irritable, even irrational, violent. Even violent? Yes. At least in one case on record, a patient committed an act of violence that, that he could not recall later on. Uh, did the patient offer any reason, any excuse for his violent behavior? Well, he wasn't even aware of it. He thought he'd been asleep the whole time. Thank you. Your witness. Maybe, maybe I did do it. Maybe I did kill him. Doctor, you just said that in a case on record, were those your words? Yes. The case on record, a patient committed an act of violence and didn't realize it later on. Now, was this particular case one of many cases? I don't understand the question. I'm trying to ascertain if this particular case that you mentioned is unique, the side effects unusual. Were they? Well, it, it wasn't a one-time situation, but a rarity nevertheless. Yes. And would you agree the chances of the accused committing an act of violence after taking this drug are at best minimal. Well, yes. Thank you. Well, Mr. Schiller, do you wish to redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Gordon, about the case you just mentioned, well, it was a rarity, as you said. It nonetheless did happen. Is that true or not true? Yes, it's true. It did happen. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> How do I know I didn't kill Coleman? You were asleep in your room. I don't know. It could have been like the doctor said. I got out of bed, went out, killed him, came back and woke up in my own bed. No, Barry. Why not? I had all the other symptoms. I was dizzy, my eyes wouldn't focus, I was groggy. You walked in your sleep across the entire campus twice and you weren't seen by anyone who knew you. But my eyes would have been open. How could they know I was asleep? Barry. Did you ever consciously want to kill Ross Coleman? No, sir. Then you didn't. I'm convinced of it. No, he didn't actually hit Professor Coleman. He just pushed him back against a tree. I see. Well, how did he push him, Miss Ellis? Gently, in a playful manner, or hard with anger? Hard. But he didn't strike him. No. Was he going to strike him before you stopped him? I guess so. You guess so? His fist was drawn back, wasn't it? Yes. Then wouldn't you say he was preparing to ram it into Professor Coleman's unprotected face? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. The prosecutor is badgering his own witness. 
I respectfully submit, Your Honor, that Miss Ellis is an unfriendly witness. She's had a very close relationship with the accused. Yeah, but Mr. Scheller, Mr. Marshall has a point, however. You needn't bully your witness into answering your questions. Objection is sustained. Please continue. Miss Ellis. Is it true that you were Professor Coleman's mistress? Objection? Irrelevant. Your Honor, I'm seeking to show a motive here. Overruled. Well, Miss Ellis? Are you trying to remember? No, I was not his mistress. Well, <laughs> perhaps you and I are having a communications failure. Let me rephrase the question. Did you and Professor Coleman have an affair? You didn't know Professor Coleman. It's very easy to talk about somebody you didn't know. I knew him as a wonderful man, a good teacher, and a fine person. Barry had a very full schedule of books and basketball. I couldn't seem to fit into it somehow. There just didn't seem to be time for me. We quarreled. It was nothing big and nothing final. It's just that it all seemed so hopeless to me. I just couldn't see where we were going. Did Professor Coleman offer to comfort you? No, it wasn't like that. Well, what was it like? Exactly. He'd had a fight with his wife, and he said that she was asking too much of him, that she was always making demands and never giving. we came together at that time in our lives, we both needed reassurance and compassion. And did you find the reassurance and compassion you've just spoken of? Well, the answer is yes, it is true. You and Professor Coleman spent the night together. Now, isn't that right? It was only that one time. We both realized it was a mistake. We both agreed never to meet like that again. I was still in love with Barry. And Ross, <laughs> Professor Coleman, was still very much in love with his wife. Ms. Ellis, let's go back to the scene behind the chemistry lab. Was Professor Coleman empty-handed, or was he carrying something? He was carrying a folder, a yellow folder. Like this? Yes, it was exactly like that. He always kept his students' records in yellow folders. And what else did he keep in the folders? Uh, material relating to his research. Did he keep records of his associates in folders like this? Yes. Objection. All this talk about yellow folders is irrelevant. Your Honor, I intend to develop this to show its relevance. Overruled. Thank you, Miss Ellis. I have no further questions. The witness is excused. Your Honor, the people rest. Mr. Marshall, the defense may call its first witness. Mrs. Lita Coleman. Mrs. Coleman, you testified a moment ago that your husband made notes on index cards. Do you recognize these cards? Yes, these are the cards my husband used. Did he make his notes in longhand? No, he used a shorthand all his own. Are you able to decipher that shorthand? I am. And did you decipher these notes for me at my request? I did. I ask that these cards be marked for identification as Defense Exhibit A. Counselor? I hope you intend to develop that line, along with your yellow folders. Yes, Mr. Schiller. As a matter of fact, I intend to develop both lines with my next witness. I don't deny that Ross Coleman and I had our differences. I regarded him as an extremist. 
always ready to put down the establishment. And how did he regard you, Mr. Wade? He appointed me his associate director on our research project. Oh. Well, according to this, he intended to ask for your dismissal if you didn't offer to resign. May I see that? Now, this card simply says, Mark W., followed by a row of dollar signs. What does that mean? Well, I have no idea. It might have, it might have something to do about my salary. Oh, that isn't very likely, is it? Professor Coleman didn't pay your salary, did he? Objection. This is all irrelevant. Overruled. Now, this card is headed, The Wages of Sin. And under it is a price list, beginning with exam answers, $100. Term papers, 150 Can you explain that, Mr. Wade? No. Well, then maybe you can explain this. Mark Wade cannot be trusted. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Isn't it very clear to you? No, it isn't. What happened? Professor Coleman catch you selling your wares? No. Didn't he, Mr. Wade? Didn't he? Why? Why, Mr. Wade? I have debts. I have a small salary. Big apartment, a new car. I didn't kill him. I swear to you, I could never have done a thing like that. No, but you did help to cover it up. To cover up your own disgrace, isn't that right? I had to. I had no choice. Even if it meant his killer would go free. If I had exposed him, I would have exposed myself. We were linked. From the moment that Ross Coleman caught me accepting money from him. From whom? Foster. Ken Foster. Was it you, Ken? I told you no. Now leave me alone. Why, Ken? Why what? Why did you do it? I didn't. Well, then who do you think did? Wade? I don't know. How should I know? Barry? You still gonna let him carry this ball? Barry's still got you to handle things for him, Mia. What? Why, Ken? I want her to be a basketball player. Pro ball. I, I, I'm no brain. I just can't cut it with books. He... Coleman found out I was buying my way through her. I was ripping off everything. Radios, tape decks. Whatever I could get my hands on to pay off Mark Wade and the guys like him. There was, there was only a few, but I found them. I, I had to. Because I had to play. I didn't have a chance with the scouts. When Coleman found out, I... I don't know, something inside of me said, you got to stop him. No, I didn't plan on Barry taking a rap. That was an accident. He went out, he grabbed my jacket, and so I was wearing his. And I switched him back later in the locker room after I saw the, the rip in the sleeve. Just in case. Oh, okay. I let him take Barry. I let him take him because... Because I was scared. So scared. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you still making shredded nuts? Are you sure this is all you want? Just a cup of plain tea? Yes, thank you. <sighs> boy, I tell you, if my boyfriend just got cleared of a murder charge, I think I'd go nuts and put a little sugar in it. <laughs> What do you think is taking them so long? Well, well, there's a lot of paperwork involved. It takes process to get into jail, and it takes process to get out of jail. Doesn't anybody say I'm sorry? Well, I think the way they look at it is that they were just doing their job. Maybe someday they'll install a computer with a heart. Right now, they just have to make do with human beings. Oh, they're here. Hi. Ah. <sighs> I feel like we should send out for some maidens to strew flowers at your feet. Yeah, well, why don't you send out for a few? Flowers? No, maidens for me and, uh, and a pizza for all. 
Why don't we discuss this in the other room? Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, Joni, I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't matter? No. This is all that matters. Now. 